so just wanted to give a little bit of an update on where we are in terms of our response to COVID uh, and perhaps give a little bit of an explanation of some of the measures that we have in place. So we have seen a slight increase in admissions for patients who require uh, hospital admission for COVID related illness and so as a result of that we're in a position where we are now setting ourselves back up to get prepared for um, the management of COVID as part of our winter plan. So we are in a position at the minute where we are putting our pathways back into place to manage people who don't have COVID and patients who may have or do have confirmed COVID through very different channels in the organisation. So we are at the moment trying to reduce the footfall into the organisation and we have also just taken a view that we are about to restrict our visiting again and I do really understand how important it is for people to be able to see their loved ones when they're in hospital. It's a really difficult time for families um, and we're just about to consider lifting some of the restrictions that we have had in place but unfortunately as a result of the changes in the Covid response and the presence of COVID both in the community and therefore in the hospital. From an infection control patient and staff safety perspective, we have had to keep those restrictions in place. So what that actually means at the moment is that we can have one visitor for people under exceptional circumstances. We will include in that patients who are at the end of life and we will also extend that to other exceptional circumstances which we can agree through the matrons or ward managers with a member of the family when somebody's in hospital but we will be restricting visiting just to the absolute essential visiting possibilities that we can create for those in exceptional circumstances. So if you are attending for an outpatient appointment we are asking that people come alone to reduce the footfall um, and to support us in trying to maintain social distancing. However, what I would like to say is that we don't want people to come independently if they need a carer or support to come with them. We're very conscious of the fact that it's important for people to be able to make that decision to bring somebody with them if it's absolutely necessary. So what I mean by that is if they're coming to an appointment where they've got high anxiety or if you're coming to an appointment and you actually need physical support from somebody else, by all means we want you to come with that person. But on the whole we're asking that if you are independent and you're capable of coming on your own to please do so. If you do need to bring somebody with you or if you're dependent on somebody when you're coming to the hospital, please do phone in advance and the telephone number that you need to ring for the clinic or the appointment will actually be on your appointment letter. And if you just let them know that somebody is coming with you and the reasons why, we'll be able to accommodate that in a timely and efficient manner. When you do come to the hospital for any reason other than being an inpatient, we do ask that you follow the same rules and you follow hands face space the same as you would do anywhere else so we expect people to wear a face covering when they come through the door if you really haven't got one by now one will be provided for you as you come through the front door of the hospital there's plenty of hand sanitizer around the building and we do ask you to only come if you've been invited um, and also when you do get here to remember the two meter social distancing rule um, we have a limited space within the organisation and we have eight and a half thousand staff that are all on site at one time or another. So even just adding one extra person for every patient into the building is a significant number. Um, we have had people say, well, one patient visit um, and one visitor shouldn't make any difference. But it's not just about the one person or the space that they're going to. It's how we manage the infrastructure of the organisation that supports visiting. So the lifts, for example, we used to be able to fit 12 people in a lift. Now we can only have four. The general footfall across a corridor needs to be limited to maintain two metres. And where people congregate, usually at the entrances and in the main corridors on the seventh floor in particular, creates a significant issue in our inability to manage social distancing and there's lots of people coming and going through the front door. 
Our emergency department doors are open, but we are asking that we only have emergencies attend our ED. So if you require emergency care, obviously we want you to dial 999 and attend the ED. If you require urgent care, please dial 111 and take direction as to the other alternative routes to seek the advice and support that you need. This will really help us greatly in being able to respond to both our emergency response as usual and our COVID response to keep the whole community safe. So we're working as part of a new normal and this is a difficult time for everybody. If you are struggling with mental health or if you have any additional anxiety or concerns, there is help available and you can contact the numbers that are on the screen at the moment for support and advice and assistance to keep everybody safe, both mentally and physically, throughout this pandemic.